It's time for a cosmic anniversary. NASA's Spirit rover landed on the dusty surface of Mars almost exactly 21 years ago, revolutionizing our knowledge of the red planet. In fact, the golf cart-sized rover was originally tasked with searching for traces of water on Mars, and it ultimately fulfilled its mission with flying colors. Since then, we have learned that the reddish shimmering celestial body was by no means always as dry as a bone as had long been assumed. And yet the Spirit mission also had a series of rather unpleasant incidents in store. Unfortunately, contact with the probe was suddenly lost in March 2010, and since NASA experts were unable to re-establish the connection in the period that followed, the mission was forced to end the following year. Fortunately, Spirit was not alone in exploring alien worlds. Its sister probe, Opportunity, was built in the same way and would continue to examine Mars under the microscope until June 2018. All good things come in threes. 30. When NASA Spirit and Opportunity probes touched down on Mars on January 4th and 25th, 2004, they did not land in the traditional sense. Instead, they first bounced across the planet's surface about 30 times in a bundle of airbags before finally coming to a halt. And while the probes had left Earth on June 10th and July 7th, 2003, NASA experts had given them a very exciting task. Could it be that Mars, which today is a prime example of a supposedly dead and cold planet, once had water? Since the Mars Global Surveyor and 2001 Mars Odyssey space probes had already revealed the telltale traces of a former lake, the experts decided to select the corresponding region in the Gusev Crater as the landing site for Spirit. Opportunity, in turn, got up close and personal with a small crater in the Meridiani Planum lowlands on the opposite side of the planet. And if everything had gone according to plan, the mission would have been over after about three months. Fortunately, however, not everything went according to plan in the end. While the originally predicted mission duration was just 90 sols, or 90 Mars days, both probes were to exceed this target range by far. A brief explanation. One sol is equivalent to 24 hours, 39 minutes, and 35 seconds. But Spirit ultimately covered more than 2,200 sols instead of the targeted 90 sols, meaning that it was able to travel significantly more meters and take more pictures than expected. Expressed in figures, this means that the rover moved a total of 7,730 meters across the Martian surface, sending more than 156,000 images back to Earth. But the rover's scientific work was not neglected either. Spirit took almost 370 measurements with the AXPS X-ray spectrometer and 933 measurements with the so-called Mossbauer spectrometer, which was able to analyze Martian material without destroying it. And as already mentioned, Spirit was not tied to a fixed location. Instead, with its six independently driven wheels, it was able to explore the Martian surface in a mobile way. In addition to the various cameras and spectrometers, the probe was also equipped with a swivel arm and a rock microscope, as well as an instrument that allowed it to brush and drill several millimeters into rock surfaces. On the Trail of Martian Water While most of us would probably need a short breather after a journey through space lasting several months, Spirit began sending the first high-resolution color images from Mars to Earth soon after its airbag-supported soft landing. What we see is another Martian wasteland peppered with reddish-brown sand and countless stones, and which at first glance could easily be mistaken for an earthly desert. No less impressive, however, is the true color image of the central part of the so-called Columbia Hills captured from a distance of about 300 meters with Spirit's panoramic camera. But after the first pictures were taken and the first chemical and mineralogical tests had been carried out, an incident occurred that, in retrospect, seems like an ominous omen. On January 21, 2004, NASA's ground team suddenly lost contact with Spirit. It soon became clear that Spirit's computer had malfunctioned and was constantly rebooting due to a memory error. Fortunately, the experts were able to fix the problem quickly and resume normal operations on February 6th. The scientific centerpiece of the mission, the search for former water, was also initially ill-fated. 
The analysis of the first rock samples showed that they were basaltic in nature and showed no influence from the cool wet. In order to find the element traces of desire elsewhere after all, NASA decided to send the rover, despite its estimated lifespan of just 90 Martian days, to the Columbia Hills, which are over two kilometers away and where the corresponding panoramic photo was taken. On Sol 158, Spirit finally arrived at the approximately five kilometer long and three kilometer wide mountain range and sensed an exciting first clue there. Spectroscopic examinations of a rock showed that it contains hematite, a mineral that can form in contact with water, among other things. However, the decisive water hit was landed on Sol 205. Named Colvis, this unusual rock contained a clear signature of the iron-rich mineral gothite, which contains water in the form of hydroxyl as part of its structure. And while this extraordinary discovery was no less than one of the most certain indications of the existence of water on Mars, Opportunity recorded an equally remarkable find on the other side of the planet. Specifically, Spirit's sister probe was confronted with boundless blueberries at its landing site. And in this context, of course, they are not delicious Martian blueberries, but small rock spheres. These are again composed of hematite and were partially embedded in the layered rock of the crater rim or scattered in front of it, from which the researchers concluded that they were formed within the rock. This is crucial because further investigation showed that it contains jerosite, a potassium iron sulfate hydroxide that typically forms in a water-rich environment. What Spirit found out about life on Mars. Spirit then devoted himself to the task of climbing Husband Hill and took another series of fascinating panoramic images on a ridge below the summit. Further excursions to McCool Hill, Low Ridge Haven, and Silica Valley followed, where Spirit captured a dust devil, a special air vortex, about 34 meters in size. But the rover also had further success in its search for water traces. While Spirit had already identified a sulfurous material at Husband Hill, in which water molecules were probably also bound, the probe encountered a rock with a high magnesium iron carbonate content on its way back down. Since this forms in wet and pH neutral environments and dissolves in acidic liquids, Spirit had uncovered a decisive clue that non-acidic water must have once sloshed on the red planet. In Silicon Valley, on the other hand, a sandy, churned-up area became the focus of scientific interest. The exciting thing about this was the fact that the sand in question consisted of 90% silicates, and as a rule, such a concentrated silicate accumulation can only be formed under the influence of water. And it's even possible that the water from a hot spring was involved, which means nothing other than that the region in question could once have offered good conditions for the development of life. But the modern Martians are somewhat more tempestuous, as was demonstrated by the severe planet-spanning sandstorm of 2007, which severely hampered the further mission of the two rovers. As a result, less than 9% of sunlight reached the surface, and it took several weeks before Spirit and Opportunity were able to carry out minor activities again. And after Spirit accidentally broke a rock with one of its wheels, Analysis of the rock's interior revealed that it might also have come from a hot spring. A rover in a trap, the end of the spirit mission. A hibernation period to save energy and another local sandstorm later, however, the worst possible scenario occurred. On May 1, 2009, spirit got stuck in the very soft, loose material of the West Valley and was now trapped in the sand trap. To maneuver the rover out of its predicament, the experts simulated its stuck situation even on Earth. But unfortunately, Spirit could only free himself inch by inch. Fortunately, in the same breath, it was still able to produce enough electricity to carry out further investigations, which allowed the sandy trap to be identified as a mixture of basaltic and silicate-rich materials. And true to the motto, a blessing in disguise, the rover's entrapment turned out to be an exciting opportunity. The composition of the surrounding surface layers indicated that liquid water must have been present here only recently. 
This was the only way to explain why soluble compounds such as ferrosulfate had been washed down so far, while non-soluble minerals such as hematite and silicate remained on the surface. Despite all this, there was still the problem that the rover was stuck, unable to move forward or backward. NASA responded by launching a high-profile campaign called Free Spirit, which allowed the public to participate in the rescue attempts. In the course of the evaluations, the experts came to the conclusion that Spirit had broken into a crater filled with sand and covered by a firmer crust. And six months later, things finally got serious. Unfortunately, the subsequent recovery operation was not crowned with success. Only millimeters could be gained by the several driving commands, and during one of the rescue attempts, the right near wheel of the rover failed. The steadily declining energy supply and the approaching Martian winter did little to ease the situation either, and on January 26, 2010, NASA had no choice but to announce the end of the futile rescue efforts. From then on, the rover was to serve as a stationary research platform, and it would probably have done so if radio contact with it had not been lost on March 22, 2010. And although NASA tried various tricks to restore the connection until May 25th of the following year, Spirit never responded again. In effect, this meant nothing less than the involuntary end of the mission, and the last image that Spirit sent to Earth in February 2010 shows us once again a panoramic view of a part of the 166-kilometer-wide Yusev Crater. As already mentioned, its sister probe, Opportunity, was in operation for much longer. Its mission only ended after 14 years and 219 days on Mars, when it could not be awakened from hibernation after a dust storm. The last Opportunity images were taken on June 10, 2018 and they show us the faintly shimmering sun in the Martian sky, which is just being darkened by the approaching dust storm. And now we'll show you how you can darken the dimly shimmering subscribe button with your click. Press the thumbs up and subscribe with pleasure so you'll never miss a new video from us again. We'll see you soon.